Welcome to Prachov Rocks in the Czech Republic of Europe. Just an amazing labyrinth of stone set in this beautiful forested area here in the highlands in northern Czech Republic. About an hour, a little bit more than an hour away from the capital city of Prague. Uh, beautiful, beautiful location. Thanks again for joining me. Whoa. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey, and here with my wife and another few friends of ours on a little trip through this part of Europe and wanted to come to this location, looked around for some geologic places in near Prague where we're staying and found that this was about an hour away and looked at some photos and thought this looks like a good place to come and do a hike, explore a little bit and also do a video. So thanks again for joining me. Let's check out these rocks here and explore the geology as best we can. Um, I don't have a ton of knowledge about this place, but I've been able to make a few observations here already and possibly you can help me along as we go. So we can see this sandstone is weathered into uh, a grayish color. Uh, if we look at it here, we can see it weathers this grayish color. There's some lichen growing on some of the surfaces here, but where it's been eroded through, we can see it's more of a white to tan, I guess beige color or light gray. Um, and in touching, it's quite granular. Um, so this is a sandstone. This is what I'd call a coarse grain sandstone. Um, and we can see that it has the overall, some layering to it, some bedding, and they're still pretty close to horizontal. But what I'm not seeing here that's typical in much of the Southwestern US is the sweeping cross beds. You might see it places like Zion National Park, or around Moab. And remember that those cross beds in the sandstone are indicative of what we call Aeolian deposition or windblown deposition, basically sand dune deposits from an environment in which the wind was the dominant force that was transporting and depositing the sand. Here at Prachov Rocks, I'm not seeing any of the cross bedding that we typically see in some sandstones in places like the American Southwest. So that would necessitate that we have a different depositional environment going on here. So let's see what other clues we can come up with here. Let's let's head over here and take a little closer look at it. Because I think we'll see that this sand in this sandstone is not what we would call a completely well-sorted sandstone. As we look at this, we can see there are pebbles in it. So this is, I guess I would call this a moderately sorted sandstone the sizes are not all uniform there's some degree of difference in the sizes of the particles you can see there's a few pebbles in here that are oh i guess about bb size maybe about two millimeters or so in diameter another little section up here if i can reach up that high showing some of these larger pebbles in the sandstone and so whatever depositional environment we consider here as depositing this sandstone needs to be capable of transporting particles of a few different sizes. There's not a huge degree of size variation here like we might see with a, a glacier or some other depositional environment, but you know particles that range from maybe up to three or four millimeters in diameter and then down to half or so a millimeter. So there is some fluctuation in the energy level, that the energy level of the system is depositing different material. And in places you might get a sense that there's a few bigger pebbles in like a zone like this, but as I kind of scan across here, that doesn't really persist. I know you have the, the shadows there of the, the trees above, but um, I'm not seeing that this is actually a bed of coarser grained material. So what we have then is we have a system that's depositing a lot of sand um, into a region um, somewhat continuously. There is some bedding horizons here, but not as many as you might expect. And um, I do know the depositional environment here, so we'll just kind of spill the beans. This has been interpreted as a delta deposit. So rivers and streams entering uh, possibly either, well, in this case, probably the ocean was depositing lots of sand right at the mouth of that river system. 
as uh, these delta deposits. So you'd expect there to be fluctuations in the the energy level of the stream. So it's depositing little pebbles at some time, at certain times, and other times it's depositing more of the sandy units there. But more or less continuous deposition, no obvious breaks in the deposition there. Uh, here's another little view of some of the sand sized particles in this rock. And it seems to be, again, I don't have my hand lens with me, but it looks like it's dominantly quartz rich in terms of just what I'm seeing with my eyeballs here. It looks like quartz is the dominant product. So it's a what we call a mature sandstone, meaning it's for, far enough from its source that the particles that have been transported have collided. The softer material has probably been broken up into finer material. And the stuff that's larger, the sand size and pebble size particles uh, is dominated by quartz rich material. So we'll go ahead and continue to explore this area with a couple other segments. Um, that's a little bit about the rocks themselves. I think as we follow this trail around we'll find some good places to explore the rock in a little bit more detail. We can see that it's weathered into these big fins. Uh, there's definitely some fracturing. If you look back over here, there's some fracturing through the rock. Um, and probably frost wedging is enhancing those fractures and forming this sort of labyrinth of fins that makes this place so uh, scenically attractive and appealing. So let's go ahead and explore a little bit more here at Prachov Rocks. Okay, another little section of, along the trail here looking at some of the rock, just really beautiful bright lichen on the rock. And here you get a nice view of Again, this coarse green sandstone with a little bit of pebbles in it every now and then, like this one right here. Um, but you also can see the, the weathering characteristics of this rock with the little honeycomb weathering from dissolution. Could be a little bit of calcite cement that uh, causes some of that dissolution. Um, I suppose could be s some salts that are present in the rock as well not completely sure uh, but let's go back over this way this is also a, a rock climbing area so i've been really intrigued with as a rock climber myself how they how they do rock climbing here and while there's no climbers here you hopefully can see um, some of these metallic rings that are on the wall every i don't know three or four meters or so going up the wall that's the what they are using for protection and i don't know if they're hammered in like pitons or drilled in but uh, these big rings that they they clip to going up some of them those ones look newer but there have been a few places where i've seen much older looking ones and let's head up here this is just an amazing wall of just textured just kind of sca a scallop surface i guess um you can really see it well here at the bottom just really cool with these more resistant beds I've weathered out a little bit. Super interesting. Let's go up the trail a little bit. And then the other thing that's um, pretty amazing here are these large fracture sets. Let me actually go back down and show you this from the trail. So there's really nice vertical fractures that divide the rock into these spectacular fins. So here you can see just these beautiful vertical or sub-vertical fractures running through the sandstone. And then most likely the effects of frost wedging have widened those fractures out, accentuated them to some degree. Here's some of the iron oxide, oxide staining in the sandstone, forming these really colorful reddish brown bands here. But just a great little trail. I'll be sure I put on the video description which trail I took. There's actually several you can choose from depending on how ambitious you are. This is the green trail. Um, some more of these fractures here. You can see running through the rock. And then more of this fantastic honeycomb weathering up in this little area here and also on this wall just forming these amazing textures and then with all these fractures there's 
there's these really fun routes so here's the descent through one of these fractures luckily there's stairs here we'll take you guys through this one as well it's about shoulder width here a little bit more maybe a meter it's kind of looking up and then back around yeah, pretty cool Get back down So we've talked a little bit about the formation of the sandstone as a delta deposit with these mature quartz rich grains of sediment. Um, we've looked at some of the weathering processes here to form the, the big fins and fractures and some of the unique textures on the walls with sort of the honeycomb weathering we see in places. It's just a place where you just are constantly looking down, but then also looking up a lot. There's the, the stairs we just came through right there. So let's go see what else we can find here. Beautiful little buttress over there. And then this just beautifully sharp 90 degree, what we call an arete in climbing. Uh, it goes straight up this tower. A little hard to see with the lighting. And there's a few of these, let me see if I can see that better, uh, these rings up here. You might be able to pick up that ring right there. But again, just a fantastic weathering of this rock that makes these pockets you can put your fingers in for climbing. The rock here is very hard and resistant. So this is like, as a climber, this is, this is spectacular. This is really great stuff. So let's come through here. And it looks like there's another little section of wall. Oh wow, look at this, this is great. Um, look at the weathering, just the honeycomb weathering up here on this face. It's just exceptional. Uh, and it looks like there's some climbs there as well. There's actually a couple of rings on the wall. Uh, and then I guess going into those rings, looks like they do try to protect with gear in the cracks. There's actually a darker varnish here, this patch of rock that's flat, um, that's harder and more resistant, that's probably grown on the outer part of this fracture. And then once that's been weathered through, you can see some of the pocketed uh, Swiss cheese looking honeycomb weathering up there. Just really cool spot. Just wish I had my climbing gear and it was a few degrees warmer. Right down this little trail. Another view of the awesome weathering features. You typically see these as well along coastlines where salt weathering can do this as well uh, in various rock types as the salt crystals expand as, they, as the water evaporates. Uh, the salt sort of splits apart the rock and you get that sort of weathering feature as well. But just a fun, even without the geology, what a fun little trail. This face covered in green moss. And then we have this little labyrinth that goes up through this crack. Almost more of a hiking exploration video than anything. Beautiful, clean, vertical fractures here in the sandstone. Then another set that runs through here. Just so spectacular. Amazing. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little glimpse into this fantastic geologic wonderland here in the Czech Republic, Prachov Rocks. Thanks again for joining me, geology professor Sean Wilsey. 
I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for all your support and donations. Helps me get out to these places, make geology education videos that I can share with students and anyone else who's interested. So thanks again. There is a donation link under the video description. There's a thanks button below to the right of the viewer. And anything you can help out with is much appreciated. But thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Take care.